Hey everybody, and welcome to episode 2 of creating a level builder game. So, to start off with, we're going to want to create a new sprite. We can just duplicate sprite ground, and then we can rename it sprite wall. We set the wall up in the first episode, but we never created a sprite for it. So I can just quickly go in here and make something up. Okay, I'm just going to make some sort of like layers of bricks for now. And it should work out just fine. Okay. And again, this will be 32 by 32. And I want to change the color, of course, to something. I guess I'll do something kind of out there. All right. Oh, didn't want to do that. Okay. So there we have a basic sort of wall. And of course, this can just be sort of placeholder for now. But we're going to want to change the speed of this to zero and the speed of this to. Well, actually, let's set both of them to just one. We want all of the speeds to be one because when you change them in the Game Maker code, it's actually affected by the speed on the actual sprite. So now what we need to do is we need to create a new object. This is actually going to be a parent object. And it'll be parent block. Now what is a parent object? It's really just an object that's above other objects. It's like the parent of other objects. So it's going to be the parent to all the blocks. Okay. So we can just drag this in as a child, as I open the parent menu right here. And then I'm going to want to create a new object, object wall, and then we can drag in the wall sprite here. So yeah, and then of course we're going to want um, this to be another child of parent block. Now why would you want to use parents? Well, they're really useful because for example, if you have some sort of collision, you can just check for a collision with parent block instead of checking for a collision with ground and the wall and everything else that you have. You can just see if it's a block, because if it's a block, if it's colliding with parent block, it can be any of these. So if you collided with the wall, that would be colliding with parent block, and colliding with object ground would also be colliding with parent block. So. It's really just a very simple way to keep track of that. Okay, so now we're going to need to go into our load grid script. Okay, so yeah, let's open this up all the way. So right off the bat, we can simply get rid of this and add um, the object wall in. So yeah, that's pretty quick and simple. So we're going to need to be adding some code here, and we're going to have a code for a collision point. So what is a collision point? It's you get you input a specific x axis or x location, so it'll be i times 32, and a specific y location, and you're checking for a specific block. We want to check for the parent block, and there's some extra code such as the precise collision checking and we want that to be false we don't need precise and then not me equals true so this has nothing to do with with controller game which is what we'll be calling this script so what so why do we want to be storing the object that we are colliding with in this collision point well we're gonna so we're gonna be using this load grid very dynamically so I mean that we're going to be using it often. We're going to be using it to update the amount of blocks that we have. And whenever we update the game, this is looping through every single possible location on the grid. And then we're creating the objects. So we're going to be wanting to use this load grid multiple times. But the problem is, we'll be loading the same objects on top of each other. So to make things easier, all we need to do, or to make things more efficient rather, all we need to do is just loop through everything and delete every single object that's there 
and then recreate the objects. It's like basically refreshing everything. So we'll need to do this if n does not equal null one. So basically, this collision point will return an object, and if it and if it doesn't collide with anything, then it'll just return null one. So if it doesn't return null one, then with n, so this allows us to do code for n inside something else, and then we just want to destroy the instance. Okay. So technically, if I play the game right now, it should change nothing. Okay, so we have some errors here. Statement in a switch must appear after case or default. Oh, okay. I accidentally deleted the code. Um, well, no. I need to move this. Okay, yeah, very simple mistake. Okay, I just put the code inside of the code. Okay, yeah, so move this code in front of the switch statement. We want to be doing all of this before we do the switch statement. Okay. So now if we press play, it should work, and we still just have the block there. Nothing happens, because it's deleting everything and then placing the objects that are supposed to be there. And also, we have that object wall now. So we can also just insert... Um, we can also just copy this code, maybe move it over a pixel, and then insert a wall too. So let's see this. So yeah, we also have a wall here. It's pretty simple to add tons of new types of blocks now. We can have as many blocks as we desire. So. Let's go back in the ground sprite, and let's create another sprite. Because if you look at ground, there's obviously not going to be any grass as you go farther down. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a second uh, image that has some more ground. And this will be for like deeper layers of ground. Okay, so I'm just going to add some, some random dots here and there. Okay, it's just something quick and simple. So inside the object ground, we're going to be allowing it so our system is going to be very dynamic. So they can place the ground wherever they want, and then the grass will automatically appear or disappear based on if it needs to be there or not. But in order to handle that, we need to do image speed equal zero. Because if we have, if we don't set the image speed equal to zero, this will be, uh, it will be playing these two sprites over and over again. So now it won't play any sprites. Okay. So we need to also add a step event. And inside the step event, we're gonna check to see at DS grid get and then global dot main grid floor. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna check to see if there is any if there is a like any sort of object or any type of block above this spe the specific instance of this ground and if there is then we're gonna change to the second sprite and the second sprite is just ground because there's stuff above the ground so grass would not be growing there it's just a sim it's kind of a simple little detail that we'll have and then we're using this floor method so this takes a number for example 1.08 and then it changes it to just 1 or 3.9 to just 3 and that's really useful because we need to be in the top left corner for the x and y coordinates for the objects because their origin the their x and y coordinates are in the top corners and we need to divide it because by 32 because we're multiplying by 32 to get to where they are and we need to transfer from the grid and then we want to do well, actually, we want to do minus 1 because we're checking one pixel up on the y-axis. I need to switch this to a y. And if it is, we need to be checking to see if it does not equal ID sky. So if it's anything other than sky, then grass will not be growing. So now we just need to switch the image index and have it equal 1. So now, let's go in here 
and then I'll add um, right here I'll add this so let's see if this works so yeah it's kinda hard to see but there is grass on this one and there is no grass on this one this one is definitely the second image in fact let's just make that easier for ourselves and add a couple uh, layers more of grass here okay so we can easily see that there's um grass there okay yeah so there's definitely grass here there's definitely no grass here so the last thing we need to do in this video is set up a system for clicking on a specific spot in the grid and then spawning in a block there so since we're doing that we can just delete that code right there and then we're gonna wanna have a new global variable for the current selection and this is gonna have an enumerator in there in it and yeah we can just have ID wall as the current block that you will be clicking and placing so we're gonna need to add a mouse event because we're gonna be clicking the mouse in order to get this to work so global left pressed is what we're gonna want okay and so we're gonna need to have two variables set and we're gonna want to do again floor mouse X divided by 32 and by Y floor mouse Y divided by 32 wow. okay so now we have the X and Y values and all we need to do is input it into the grid and then of course we need to call script load grid okay so global main grid xx yy are the values and then we want to do the current selection and then we can just do load grid global dot main grid okay so it's giving me an error what did I do wrong oh nothing okay it just went away so now I can just save this game and then we should be able to place walls wherever we want so awesome okay now let's just go in here and change it and change the uh, selection to ground so now if we play we should be able to place the ground wherever we want instead of the walls and if we place it below or above it will change which one is the grass so yeah pretty awesome